How's it going, everybody? Honest Sarcastic here with the Hyperloops. So, uh, it's probably been a long time since you guys have uh, heard from me or just by myself. You know, we had the podcast running uh, before. Um, so, overall, um, we're kind of looking at like the wild, wild west as far as like the meta is concerned. Um, there's a lot of different options. Um, it's really hard to kind of gauge, you know, what the. I guess yeah, you're, you're pretty much never going to be able to be like, this is the best deck right away. You're going to have a deck and you're going to believe it's the best deck and that's perfectly fine. But like, you know, if we were to fast forward to right before the end of the format or the, you know, the end of the meta, it's probably not that same deck still. Um, if, you know, uh, the next set got delayed, you know, three months, they, there'd probably still be a deck past that at that point as long as people are still trying to you know, build the quote unquote best deck. So the it, it's it's always going to be kind of tough to you know at the beginning. Um, at the beginning, normally speaking, uh, playing a more aggressive deck uh, ends up being the the best option. Uh, primarily because we don't know you know so like as, as you get closer to like mid range or control type decks, they don't know what they really need in the deck. And what I mean by that is so like think of let's say mill last set Yoda Leia. Um, it's a very, very good deck. But they couldn't do remotely anything at the beginning because they didn't know what they needed. Um, as the as the meta kind of, like, shook out and they saw what was doing very well, and, you know, lots of Vader, you're like, all right, well, you know, I'm going to need probably some heals from Field Medic, and I'm going to need Force Jumps to make sure I'm able to stop damage. And, like, Force Jump in general was quite good, but, like, let's say we were looking at a, a format with a bunch of specials, um, and very few actual damage sides, you know, force jump wouldn't have been nearly, uh, at the same power levels. So they may have chosen other options or maybe just ran one for specific random matchups, um, yada, yada, yada. So like uh, beginning on, yeah, you're going to be looking for the aggressive type decks. Um, you know, the, the, like Phasma, whatever, because Phasma is carrying three to four dice on her own, depending on, you know, the, the iteration that you build. Um, so, like, that's going to be, you know, obviously quite interesting. Uh, we're going to have, you know, obviously Snoke here. Um, you probably already saw the Snoke Watto Foss deck um, that Scott McDonald uh, did uh, amazingly well with at Milton Keys. Uh, he was also playing one of the Yoda Leia decks um, in Infinite, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, uh, quality play, good deck, boom, profit. Um, so... Snoke Water Foss is what I've been messing with for, for quite a while since uh, pretty much we saw Watto. Um, and it was like, oh, this is great. And then it was like, all right, you know, there's Wat Tambor also. And it was like, oh, shit, like, is there a reason to run yellow? And it's just like, well, you know, you can't touch his die, so Snoke just going to guarantee his ramp off of it. So we'll force it anyways. And then they, like, you know, showed Entourage. And we were like, oh, my God, this thing's amazing. And Watto became like, 100% staple, like, you don't move his ass because he gets you to 5. And once you're at 5, you've got a lot of crazy shit going on, whether it's, you know, an entourage into second entourage, or Vader's Fist, or Mega Blaster Troopers. Um, so, uh, the deck's quite, quite good. Um, you know, do I, uh, do we know if it's the best deck? No. Do I like it a lot? Yes. But, like, I like Snoke, because Snoke is ridiculous, right? But anyways, um, so we have some other things coming up. Um, you guys may have saw, you know, Trilogy with uh, Palp, Wat Tambor. Um, you know, that looked pretty solid. Didn't even really, like, focus on, you know, the supports. Um, you're going to, you know, so, like, when we, if you looked at the infograph, um, which I don't actually know where it popped up. I just know that um, Smurl showed it in our Discord. If uh, you looked at the infograph, uh, you'll have noticed that um, it was like, all right, you know, like 14 Snoke Watto Foss decks, and then um, I want to say it was seven um, Yoda Padme AR. Um, then it jumped to like five Yoda Satine Gunkin AR. And now on the second day of standard, we went from five Yoda Satine Gungan ARs to five Yoda Marauder Gungan AR. Um, 
And the reason for Marauder is because it gives you access to the one villain card, and that one villain card is Fire Spray. So yeah, you know, going Fire Spray is very, very solid there. I, I think it's interesting that uh, we saw that jump. Like, realistically, it, there was probably, like, one or two decks that were doing the Fire Spray thing, and the other decks, you know, saw it after not doing so well, and were like, oh, shit. Like, yeah, I'm switching to that. And they made, you know, like, a, the, the pretty much two-card adjustment to, to go that route. Um, so, uh, definitely very, very interesting to, to see that, that change. Um, on day two, though, the, the most we saw for, like, the top seven used decks, um, it got down to, like, the, the most as a, the, the, sorry, the least was a multiple of four for the top seven decks. Um, but we did see Snoke Water go from 14 to 20. Um, Yodalea AR, um, sorry, Yoda Padme AR, my apologies, um, went to, uh, uh, eight, so they gained one person. Um, Phasma at Voss Advanced Training, um, I think disappeared off the list. Um, so it went from, but I think it was only at like four people, maybe, yeah, it was only like four people, and it disappeared. Um, so, you know, maybe one or two dropped it, or maybe multiples, but you'll, you, when we look at adjustments like that, you, you can definitely see the shift into, oh, this is a much stronger deck. So we'll, we'll definitely be seeing how that goes, um, you know, but like in general, we're, we are still waiting for Allies of Necessity, which if I'm not mistaken is due out in what, like the next week or so. Um, so we'll see how that makes adjustments. Um, you know, Dooku is going to be a huge pain in the ass for um, a lot of the, the like rampy control decks because it's, it's going to limit your options further. Um, not to mention if, you know, he hits the Dooku Saber and rips a second card out of your hand. Then you're just like, oh. Um, but yeah, just, just losing that one card means like, all right, you know, if you're playing against aggro, you either have to go, you know, pretty much one less reroll or uh, one less potential piece of mitigation there. Um, so, like, what Dooku does with the, the meta will be very interesting because, like, Discard's always just been really, really scary. Um, they do kind of force him to go a bit heavier on blue because you want to be able to activate him all the time. Um, but something as simple as like, all right, power action, Dooku, play my hidden motive, you discard a card, it's just like, oh, okay, awesome, I hate you. Um, just like, it's essentially a free discard while it's not being free at the same time because it's really built into his point cost. The guy's 13 points um, and only has nine health. And he has, you know, two, two damage sides, a focus, a discard, and a resource. But if we look at someone like, you know, Aiden, Aiden's... Uh, two two damage sides a uh, two focus i want to say a discard and a resource um so it, it gets really really interesting there because she has like what 12 health and she's two points more so like she has an ability where people can't action cheat so like maybe that ability just doesn't count for much um so two points got her three health um like overall she hasn't been used a ton um she's not really amazing there was some usage with you know hiding talzin um ar so we'll we'll definitely see how that goes but like it, it looks like we're overall shifting away from um we're not away from vehicle decks but people just there's a lot of supports now that just aren't vehicles um meaning they don't have the the weakness to the the new electromagnetic pulse um which removes a droid or vehicle die but if there's not enough vehicle decks running around then people don't main deck that and then if the people don't main deck that vehicles are fine to run around um, but they're still going to have to concern themselves with, you know, obviously vandalize, um, probably less or so on, like, Flames of the Past, so, Surgical Strike's gone, so we'll, we'll definitely see how this ends up kind of, like, playing out, the, um, Nefarious Deed, Sabob always wins combo, um, for, like, killing opposing fists and shadow casters and stuff, it's probably still going to be running around, so, we'll see how that goes, um, but yeah, meta-wise, we're, we're looking, at, like I said, it's the Wild Wild West, um, We'll be seeing all sorts of Afro decks. You can probably see like Afro, Watt, Faust, um, with either Afro or Watt being elite based on preference. Um, you know, uh, Afro, Elite, Grievous, and uh, Sentinel Messenger um, was touted for a bit. Oh, um, you know, they have the same variation, no Sentinel Messenger, but two battle droids um, for the extra health and better usage of uh, best defense. Um, so definitely like a, a, a ton of interesting stuff uh, there from Afra's end. Um, you know, I don't think we see Afra Tarkin come back, but you know maybe 
if if Mill does very well, you know, Afro Dark could could get some usage. Um, just because they do have, you know, the stop droid now, um, as, like, additional options, you know, two-cost assassin droid, it's, it's enough, like, singleton cheap options there, you can run it with Fickle if you want it, you know, Fickle has a couple blanks, you know, has a few damage sides, pairs with Afro, okay, um, doesn't pair with most of the other stuff there, but it still has the disrupt, um, I'm trying to actually think if... I know it has a two disrupt side. I'm trying to think of it as a single discard side. Maybe it's not two blanks. I don't think it's two blanks, actually. Um, but the single discard side could pair with, you know, uh, either Afro or Tarkin's discard if that actually exists. Um, potentially see uh, Hired Muscle come out after that point. Hired Muscle has uh, a few options for, for pairing up. So, you know, who knows? Maybe we see the Afro Tarkin come out the cut. And, you know, if we're looking at, like, what, 24 health decks... Um, you know, they, they can, they can definitely get out eight damage around to, to end the game round three. They just have to protect themselves and, um, overall lacking blue is really tough right now because villain with forsaken and hidden motive is just real good. Um, outside of Afro, let's see what else we got. Um, there is probably a myriad of people trying to break Wat Tambor. Um, Wat Tambor's ability is very, uh, FN, you know, FN, Know, 2199 slash snoke-esque in that there's a, a, a grave amount of potential there and the gentleman is rocking the ever loved you know one focus two focus resource resource uh, which is quite strong meaning you know you're you're often going to be very content with 66 percent of your die uh the blank is obviously trash as, as usual and we really normally don't want that one disrupt um the one disrupt usually isn't nearly as strong as any of the other four sides that we would like to resolve so it, it, it often, it more often than not, kind of gets that re-roll treatment where we're just like, well, screw this shit. Um, so yeah, then, you know, we're going to have the, the different Palpatine versions. Um, Palpatine, probably Thousand, Palpatine, Duato, Palpatine, Watan Bar. Um, what ends up being the, the, you know, the best is going to be really dependent on what we're looking at for the aggressive decks. Um, but... At least trilogy-wise, um, Palpatine is, is going to be a relatively large pain in the ass to deal with. Because, um, you know, if you hit him with Wat Tambor, like, they're just, the removal is just so sketchy in trilogy that you could force storm, focus, murder somebody pretty much. Because if you find, like, the, the two focus on any of your four character dice and the four storms out, you know, two focus into the two focus plus a special, you special them. Uh, you're at you know one counter you roll it in and now you can you can chain it three more times pretty much off of the focuses It's not chain in a single action. So obviously, you know removal your opponent can can go ahead and mess with you But it's just that you know by doing it that way you could end up with You know the one damage two damage three damage four damage and then whatever side it rolls and like since you've done That what you rolled it you essentially rolled it five times there you know, you have really good odds of the special coming back up again. And, you know, then you've hit for five. And that's 15 damage. Um, so, like, sure, the uh, you know, that happening isn't super spicy or likely. But we also still have the power action for uh, Palp to save the die. So, it's not like it's just one die and then you remove it and then it's gone. So, you have to have two pieces of removal. Um, whether it be for uh, one of the two focus sides um, and then that or if you just hit that. So, like, if you have two pieces of removal, you probably just hit that twice. Um, you know, wait for them to focus the special, remove it, they pull it back out, they focus again, you remove it, and then there's like, oh, and you got, like, three dice for that. Um, or three dice, well, actually, I guess you get four dice for your two removal. Um, but if you can't stop that is when you're just like, oh, like, this is going to be real bad. Real, real bad. Um... So yeah, Palpatine has some stuff going there. It's going to be interesting to see how that ends up going. Like, realistically, you, you kind of need to, to ramp, like, pretty hard into um, the abilities. And the way I've seen it is, like, you, you really want a ton of your abilities out. Like, I, I'm fairly aggressive um, when I play. So, you know, I sit there trying to get the combo. And, like, that's probably just bad of me. Um, because I should probably just be playing defensive, make sure I'm staying, you know, well enough alive and getting some damage in and messing with the opponent. And then and then all of a sudden, like, things look like they're okay, coast is clear, all right, combo kill somebody. 
Like those are that tends to always be the 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 you know the best way or the safest way to do it because we're playing Destiny and you know losing twice you're probably out of a tournament. Um, so like you just have to be real consistent about it. You can't just let your opponent beat you because they uh, they, they drew mitigation twice. Um, and you try to go off and burnt an entire round. Uh, what else is there? Um, I don't know if Snoke's getting much of um, other option treatment. Um, just Waddle Foss is just like, wow. Um, I don't know. I don't think there was a, any team comps that pair with him that were just like, oh, yeah, I'm running this. Um, you know, like for an aggressive deck or anything like that. Uh, if we get more mainstream, it's like closer to monocolor decks. We could see Kylo 2 Dooku come out. Um, Kylo 2, what? You could do, for, th there's probably some crazy stuff you could do there with like Kylo 2 Watambor. Um, I don't know if we Kylo 2 Watto. Just because Watto doesn't have like the focuses and it would be like really reliant on you hitting, you know, the, the, the natural sides that you need. Um, Towson it was it's always a struggle on uh, resource management. Um, so like in the, the the current you know quote unquote climate of the meta, um, with all of these access to different types of zero cost mitigation, uh, I don't think I'd want to be like on a on a Towson deck for the most part. Um, but like maybe like maybe there's some some shenanigans there with Entourage and Fickle and doing silly shit. Because if you what, get the resource then could fix the entourage to the two resource and play like the other cards so maybe Beckett Towson got another bomb there right like um because you can get to three entourage you know boom special or uh sorry special on Beckett or like resources and uh keep going and just, just you know clap somebody to death um and that'll set you up for like the whole game so like that could be an option maybe I'm wrong my hatred of thousand may just be unwarranted um so like i'd be looking at any of the decks that were you know decent before and either um you know a new partner makes them much better or um you know new or better you know normal bomb cards um does the job there because we got entourage we got mega blaster trooper um for big ability deck because it's four storm but the, the only big ability deck has really been palp so unless we're looking at infinite um you're not really kind of going down that path oh. All right. uh, sorry had to yell um what else came out this set it's so hard because they're, they're just like so much quality and then like so much trash at the same time um Bobby Sapphire was loving some Qui-Gon Jinn decks. Um, we... What is it? Lando, Lando Leia, 6-0 uh, at the GQ. So, um, you know, it's really been kind of quiet on the mill front, but they did get no answers, and no answers is completely ridiculous. Um, hmm. So one moment. I need to concentrate on driving. I find myself in some lane. That I need to not be in. Okay. Coast is clear, guys. Go, go, go. Alright, I'm um, sorry about that. So, so yeah, uh, Lando Leia has some, some very, very powerful, like, kind of like mill setups. Um, if you find the stealthy, you know, stealthy for four off of the Lando four, and then chuck the four at their head and do mil more. So, like, you can get, like, an eight mil there. So, you know, if, let's say you rolled out Leia, you hit, you know, the discards, um, or discard off of, like, a motivate, you know, you could have chucked two or three cards from their hand. Um, maybe they, like, try to mitigate the other die or something like that. Um... And now, if, you know, you stealthy Lando, roll out, and you find, like, the four, or even just the two, you're like, all right, well, you know, I took, like, three cards from their hand, um, milled them for, what, four to eight, um, and the numbers get quite disgusting very, very fast. Um, like, stealthy is kind of huge in that regard, in that if you, if you hit the combo with it, 
Uh, eight cards is just way too many. Um, but, like, in theory, what? The opponent should have had mitigation there, but at the same time, like, all right, are they going to try to mitigate the land, or are they going to try to mitigate, you know, additional discard? Um, and, like, realistically, you probably have to try to mitigate Lando, but if they roll Lando second, then it's like, oh, well, shit, I can't touch it. Um, so, like, Stealthy has a lot of, you know, huge combo potential there. Um, it's really, what, dead at the end of the game once you have no deck, but uh, the build-up to that point is, is really where it's interesting because, like, you're probably going to have to play at least four cards. So you really only have, like, a 26-card deck. Um, if you play four cards, what? We're assuming you've played... And it's probably more than that. It's probably, like, six. Because um, you probably... Like, you probably played, like, two or three. And you had, like, three rerolls. Um, so if you have, what, 24-card deck? Um, if they hit you for eight twice, you've got 16. And if they, mill, they discard, like, what, two cards from your hand twice? Uh, that's at 20. Um, so, like, Stealthy just has some, some really debilitating things that goes on. Um, but at the same time, like, they have to hit the sides. Finding the four on Lando is not super easy. And then if it gets mitigated, it's just like, oh, well, you know, your, your quote-unquote mill damage is, is now lacking. Um, but at, at that same point, like, you're probably just content with, you know, milling them for two and then throwing another two at them and taking the four. Because even the four is pretty good. Like, it, but it's five cards for a single round, um, meaning that if you discard one or two and mill them for four, um, that's a full round's worth of, you know, quote-unquote damage. It, since they, we'll call it five, they get rid of one round on their own, um, there's, there's only five rounds worth of damage there. Um, since you took a whole round themselves and they're expected to play one, there's uh, four left. So that pretty much means um, if, what, by round three you've hit... So like round four is pretty much the I, I'd say where the the, the kill limit is, is is what you're looking at, um, but you do have to keep your your Leia alive fast round two. Uh, a lot of different heal options for that, so that's quite quality. Um, it's really going to boil down to how fast you can rip their hand because the support base decks could could definitely uh, come out hot and do like 20 damage round three um, if unimpeded. So if you can't find the discard sides on Leia, then, then you know they'll have had enough time to ramp out into, you know, quote-unquote bombs. Because um, if they what? If they, if they like, get the jam entourage into entourage into, like, a fickle round one, you're just like, oh, shit. Because um, they, they will have gained three dice from it. But, like, quote-unquote ifs. And those ifs are, are not uh, very good. You're playing, like, a... You know, you're playing with math there and probability. Um, so, yeah. Alright, so, uh... Uh, we haven't seen anything from um, Yoda Leia Mill. Um, uh, it lost a lot of the options it had. Um, four speed was really like the, the big back breaking thing. It, the, the deck, uh, sorry, standard wise, standard wise. Um, it really relied on kind of like four speed and the action cheat um, into like discard your whole hand. So you're left with whatever options, you roll out, I mitigate whatever you're looking to do, and then we go to the next round. Uh, and you repeat that several times. And uh, that's so good that it crushed infinite. Um, but yeah, like, they got a one cost pretty much, you know, mill four. It was the Scarter card, then mill three. So if they just had no hand, they just straight up mill three. But, like, you weren't safe from it regardless unless you were able to keep a couple cards in hand. So it's it's quite brutal in that regard. You really don't know if they have it. You know, you got Commando Raid. So then, like, Resistance Ring... So, like, if the opponent commando raids you, and then the next round resistance ring commando raids you, you're just, like, fucking shitting bricks. Uh, and then if you had, like, you know, <laughs> let's say you just got hit and run into, like, discard part of your hand, then you, like, played a card, and then they no answer the last one, you know, you lost four there. So there were a lot of situations where you're just losing way too many, and resistance ring with Yoda was just like, haha, sucker. Um, but yeah, so infinite's probably gonna be littered with Yoda Leia. Um, and that's really probably going to be one of those um, formats where most people don't play it um, to kind of try to break open, you know, whatever's going on. And quite frankly, I don't know if you can break open fast uh, Yoda Leia Mill. Because, um, like, a combo deck requires a bunch of cards in hand, and you can't sustain through a crazy-ass commando raid or hit and run until, you know, discard, like, three. Um, 
So you'd have to be like straight aggro. Um, and straight aggro could probably do it. Um, so we'll, we'll see if that kind of devolves into like pure aggro versus mill and you know kill kill Leia or even just kill Yoda uh, immediately fast and the reason you would kill Yoda fast is because if you uh, if you go for Leia and you walk into a first aid um, you probably have to scrap the game up right there because like it'll have probably took you two or three dice to get four damage and then they um, they, they, they heal that all up for one resource and you're just like oh shit because you know you'll have lost the better part of a, a full round's worth of damage because um, you only start with what like four dice and then you play it on three for a fifth they probably mitigated your best die um, so you're yeah the next three you're, you're probably taking that four and you're just like all right not so bad not so bad and then boom you're like screwed all right one second switch over here i'm making good time so I'm just going a little slower um where are we at? Yoda. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll be looking at like the AR Fire Spray decks, um, which are obviously going to be quite good. Um, you're, we're, we're seeing you know all sorts of different options. Um, run it with the Falcon. Um, oh, and that one also did uh, did well, I guess. So like, interestingly enough, um, there was the AR version with. Uh, Lee, Anakin, Rebel Engineer, um, that did quite good, and, uh, I didn't really take a look at the list, but I'd assume it was running Falcon as well as Shadowcaster, um, you know, obviously the mods and stuff, so, uh, Anakin can focus, uh, leads die over, meaning you could flip two of your other dice into resource, um, so whichever of the dice between uh, Leet's other die, Rebel Engineer, and Anakin Miss Resource, you can just go take it, and then, you know, you'll be at five if you got all three resources, um, and your opponent didn't, you know, mitigate, and then boom, Millennium Falcon, Falcon roll out, Escape Craft, focus to like three resources, or, fo you know, find its own resource or two resource, you know, unattach, roll back out, you know, fix the other one, all right, super ramp setup. Um, and like I was using that uh, with Yoda uh, and it was it was very very good like when you play that Falcon round one if you find the three resource side whether focusing or escape crafting or whatever you're set up money wise for the rest of the game um, there's realistically like no stopping um, that you're just gonna have to have a plethora of threats though to continue you know jamming down and, and you know ruining the opponent um, but yeah quite strong um, so we'll see how that ends up going. But yeah, a AR in general has always been uh, quite a monster. The dilemma is just like the, the build around and the number of answers being used. So like we're still seeing vandalizes running around, but you really, it, it's a struggle. You can't vandalize a Falcon, right? Um, not a six drop Falcon. Um, you can vandalize the escape craft to mess with their focusing, um, but you'll have like slowed down your own damage and you know, they'll still have their other stuff going. So you never really know how that kind of ends up. But, uh, so there's that, there's the, you know, the Marauder AR Fire Spray, and <laughs> Fire Spray with R2 Astromech, and, you know, a couple triple turrets, or triple plus arc, or even just dorsal, and one of those, um, means you're gonna, you're gonna start firing, uh, on all cylinders. Uh, so, definitely interesting to, interesting to see how that's going to end up playing out. Um, uh, trying to think what else is there. on the list yeah like i didn't we didn't see too too much like other crazy shenanigans um there really wasn't much that was used that was kind of unexpected oh sorry um so we do have a leia 3 padme deck um you know running impulsive and uh once they seize the day so uh if you see you know the two or three focus and you're just like all right well this will be fine they'll focus and then i'll like mitigate and then boom all of a sudden you're staring down you know double Leia special and then leftover after that is the you know th another three for Padme or something you're just like oh shit that's creepy um and so I believe they also 6 would and they were running mean streets if I'm not mistaken um 
And if you're not familiar with Mean Streets, it's a um, claim. You can spot a scoundrel to add, you know, a counter, a resource counter, whatever, to this card. Then play an event. Or, sorry, not then. It's like period. You may play an event from your hand um, with the cost reduced by the number of, like, counters or resources on it. Um, so, you need the scoundrel to in, in order to put said resource there. Um, so you can't just run this if you're not a scoundrel deck. But if you're playing against a deck and you don't run any scoundrels, you can, when you claim, you can still, you know, use it um, without, like, as long as your opponents had put a counter on it. So it's, uh, so it's definitely interesting there because it allows them to, you know, snuff out, uh, entangle, um, aggressive negotiations. So, uh, lots of the, the quality kind of like two drop removal there, uh, can become accessible with that. Um, there probably shouldn't be super heavy on that, but things like flee the scene, um, you know, one cost, mitigate two dice, you have to pass for the next two actions, um, doesn't really have a drawback when you claim the battlefield and remove two dice in the process. Um, you know, double easy pickings, obviously. So, like, there's, there's enough scary stuff coming from that, um, that, like, it, it could pop out, claim, and mitigate, like, two dice, and you're just like, oh, shit, you know, how wrecked did I get there? Because they already finished their round. So, like, that's pretty good against, like, the slower decks. Um, so, we'll, we'll kind of see how that ends up doing. Um, the, the dice quality there is pretty high. Um, just because you've got, you know, the one damage, two damage, and then the special on uh, Leia 3, and now with the Padme's focus, you're you're really looking at, uh, I either hit two or three focus, and now we're looking at special, special, or, you know, special, special, three focus, um, and, like, that's, that's, that's really just enough to be really scary, if you find a single focus on Badme, you can give up her other die in order to, to two or three focus, you know, Leia, um, so it, it does similar things to Yoda as far as, like, the special is concerned, it's, like, um, but it doesn't do it all in one action, so, um, you're safer there to an extent, but there are four cards that they're running in order to, you know, action cheat that. So you have to be very cautious. Um, if you're playing three wides, you know, now that, that, that lay special gets really creepy really fast. Um, especially if they have the, the villain card down so that you can't actually pay them off. Because, like, paying them two means they're now going to be able to actually cast their mitigation. Um, or you're taking, what, six damage per special. So if you tap out round one and take a double special to the dome, you know, you've taken 12 taken the equivalent to a double force wave um and like that's a lot of damage um like snow decks in particular only have like what 26 health not 27 but they ping themselves so even after round one you're you're counting 26 round two is 25 so uh if you get blasted with double layer special twice um you'll have taken uh 23 damage um the reason for 23 is because foss would already be dead um, potentially 22 if you double shot Watto and then he died. Um, so that, that's, that's pretty scary there. And then, you know, uh, Padme's resolving focus is indirect there, uh, sweep ups quite nicely once you've already taken a buttload of damage. Uh, against two wide, it's much lesser because it's only doing four damage per special. So, you know, eight, and then it's become 16. Um, and then at 24, things have probably died. Um, like everything's probably died because two character decks don't really go past uh, that point. Um, you know, Vader would have one additional health. Um, but, yeah. So, it'll be interesting to see how that ends up going. The removal package is really rough for them. If they don't start with their battlefield, um, it's much harder for them to kind of afford things unless you're paying them off. Uh, so, I, I guess the, the, the main mitigation there goes towards uh, Padme's focus to make sure that uh, nothing untoward happens to you. You know, if, if Leia wants to hit you with the special, she's going to have to natural roll it. Um, but, you know, there are two Padme dice, so... But if you're mitigating, like, the, the two or the three that comes down, um, it's a much lower odds that another two or three comes down and fixes both of the other dice. Um, and it, let's say if you... Let's say instead you just straight up eat Leia's dice, um, they'd still be able to go, like, special plus three indirect. Um, so you're still taking seven there instead of, you know, quote, unquote, eight. Like, oh my god. Um, so at that point, it just seems better to eat the, uh, the Padme die. Um.
because at worst case you're taking eight there but best case they don't they have to re-roll into you know near oblivion and uh you'll be in a, a better place there's some asset like just chilling on the fucking other side like pseudo wanting to pass he's like a fucking moron yeah so this is a guy shifting in actually you can't see any of this shit um but yeah uh sorry i just had to pay extra caution because idiots driving are just like ridiculous um so yeah padme padme leia uh you know it's interesting damage wise uh 20 health is always really scary um especially when you're really lacking you know zero cost mitigation um they could what they get access to hasty i want to say that's it i can't think of anything else they get besides hasty um well yeah <sighs> interestingly, interestingly enough, it's also one of those decks where I'm just like, oh, Entourage should be real good here. And it's just like, Padme makes anything that wants consistency look amazing. Um, and then the question is, is like, which, which five villain yellow cards do you run? Um... And, like, that that one's kind of the tough part. I, I think they were running, um, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, the mitigation one. It's, like, a one cost, can only go on a yellow person. And it had, like, two specials that were mitigation. And I think it had some control uh, sides. Like, I want to say it was, like, resource disrupt, disrupt discard. All single. Um, but it's, I want to call it unscrupulous, but I don't think it's unscrupulous. Because unscrupulous, I think, is the discard one. Uh, it might be, like... It's not underhanded tactics, I think. Or it might be underhanded tactics. Um, but yeah. And so, that one was interesting. Um, I don't recall what the other villain cards were, though. Um, we had a lot of discussion um, on the loose Discord. Where it was just like, alright, you know, do we want... Or, I think I think Bobby Sapphire was like, he wanted the zero-cost villain cards. So he wanted, like, the, the, the bounties. Um, because if you... You know, if you jam the bounty on the opponent, you know, you'd be able to spot that the whole game until the opponent died. Or, like, that character died. So, um, definitely an interesting concept there. Um, but I, I think I think all the villain cards they had might have were in, like, that one to two range. Really trying to think what the uh, third, fourth, or fifth one were. Ugh. But, anyways, interesting enough. Um... And then uh, Yoda Padme AR, go find Padme ship, um, and start going to town. I didn't look at what their other damage cards were, um, but they definitely needed to run a ton of them because uh, if Padme died, you know, you had the ship, um, that's really now only doing like focus and resource. Uh, it does have like the, the two shield side, but that's not going to be, you know, super scary. You need to get other stuff down. So, uh, that, that seems like it would have more issues with, uh, an aggressive deck right off the bat, but, you know, it's Yoda, so Yoda's gonna get money back, meaning that you can definitely take, you know, f five or six damage, and then just be like, first aid, boom, I'm back in the game, baby. Um, especially when you tutor a Padme ship, Padme ship's gonna give Padme the, the, uh, the shield. Um, so, uh, don't know what the battlefield they chose was, though. I probably should have looked at the decks a bit better, but um, seeing as I was already kind of familiar with uh, the options, um, actually no, that one didn't have a deck list up, because um, uh, I don't think those people uh, did amazingly well. I'm not sure how well they did. Um, that was just based off of the the, the, the top used you know decks. Um, so I'd expect they were probably at top tables. Padme and Yoda have a, uh, an extreme amount of consistency. Um, but anyways, uh, so what else is there? Hmm. Yeah, that that's pretty much it. There was probably, you know, some Grievous Droid deck. But I don't think so. Oh, oh, oh. Um, there was a, a, a Rex Kess deck. And uh, that that's pretty interesting. Because, like, you, you really give up the, the Rex steal the battlefield thing. Unless you're willing to pay the resource. And, like, that deck... 
you really can't afford to, to pay the resource for that. So, like, maybe Rex was just entirely predicated on his, his die. Um, but if I'm not mistaken, they're both, what, leader troopers? So there, there was probably some shenanigans to be had there, you know, damage based deck. They went from, like, three to four, I think, um, on the number of decks being played there. So maybe it had some, maybe it had something going for it. Um, people were happy about it, liked how it looked. So, you know, the fourth one came up. Um, I don't know the number of players at each of the, the events or if it was like Friday, Saturday. So maybe there weren't people that were, you know, jumping ship. Um, but I would just, I would, I would guess that people jumped ship and call it a day. Um, the, the UK events tend to seem um, more kind of like, uh, not niche. Um, because it's like a, essentially like a smaller community. With like when there's a big event, it seems like a lot of people come out to it. Um, you know, there. I, from my understanding, there's, there's a lot of great travel options uh, for train and whatnot um, to get to places. So um, that's very good. Um, you know, we can't really train across the U.S. like 16-hour increments, crazy shit. Um, but, um, uh, but yeah. Anyways, um, so a lot of the, the the loopers did very well at the GQ. Um, Zill stealth boots. Um, oh my god, my brain's right. Scott McDonald. Uh, I'm forgetting somebody and I don't know why. Sorry, man. I totally forgot you. I remember this when I stopped recording and I'm like, shit. I'm a terrible person. Um, but yeah, so a lot of people doing very good. Happy for you guys. Um, but I think that's all I can come up with for now. Um, I think someone said there was, or, uh, the Your Destiny article where most of the information came from. Good job, Klaus, by the way. Um, you know, they're a great resource to the community. Um, puts a lot of good work in there. I just need to beat him upside the head for somehow always taking the deck list of one of our loopers and getting it posted up and always end up being mine so I don't get to play it unknown um but yeah no um shout out to your destiny Klaus you know uh, getting the stuff together and putting it out there uh he puts a lot of effort in. he puts a lot of effort in um really you know breaks himself down trying to get all that stuff and going around great guy um but yeah so I got it off their article um I'll see if I can link it um with whatever notes. Uh, sorry, I'm thinking about whether I should have taken this exit or not. Um, there's like three ways to get to my store. <sighs> I don't know what time it is. Oh, plenty of time, shit. What else? Um, Uh, thinking about if I want to turn around, go to the supermarket. Uh, I will. So, um, but yeah, there's not too much else I can think of. Um, sorry, trying to make space for this guy to go around me. Um, yeah, not too much else I can think of that did very well. You know, if I missed something, oops, I'm sorry. Um, but it's nice to talk to you guys again. It's been a while. There hasn't been too much, like, news. We had that podcast, so I didn't, you know, didn't any record anymore, and then, like, if there's not, like, a ton going on, um, really don't have a ton to say. Um, I haven't been able to get in as many reps as I want. Um, a lot of work stuff, um, overall. Um, I'm trying to think what else is there. I don't know. Shout out to the loopers and everybody. Love you guys. Um, my ass almost went back on the fucking highway. Um, no, that's pretty much it. You know, yeah, you guys are ever looking to to join the group. You know, um, we welcome you. Uh, just, you know, check out our our website, find the Patreon link, and uh, come see what we're about. You know, it's three dollars a month gets you in the Discord. Uh, we do a lot of like. There's a lot of talking about decks and stuff. Like, the $10 is a T-Prep where, you know, show the lists and try to break stuff down. Um, 
we have some separate articles for just that separate videos um but you know when stuff becomes like publicized uh we do move stuff to insight um, especially if people kind of tell us because like we're not always paying attention but uh yeah no thanks for listening uh nice to see you guys again let me know your thoughts deuces